All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're talking about a fig called Hative de Argentile. Hative means early in France, in French, excuse me, and it's from the Argentile region of France. And um, the history of this fig is actually rather muddled, but what I wanted to do in this video is talk about all the details I know about this fig with you guys and really do an educational review on this particular variety because it is really one of my favorites. I know a lot of you guys this, this season have been kind of uh, been, you know, really learning about this variety because I've been talking about it in quite a few other videos that we've done and I've been giving it a lot of praise, but guess what? This praise is not new. Um, I have been praising this fig for about five years. Uh, I think when I first started growing it, uh, some people were rather impressed. I think I maybe, I heard about this fig maybe from, I think, Dennis Johnson, my friend Dennis. Um, down, I think he's in North or South Carolina. I can't remember which of the Carolinas he's in. But So Dennis did a great job years ago on Figs for Fun, talking about some of his, his favorite figs that he's tasted. And um, certainly uh, he's tasted a ton of them. And I think he even went over to California, to the USDA, and tasted a whole bunch. And this one is just one of his favorites. Um, so I, like about five years ago or so, acquired it, uh, tasted it, especially even when it was rather young and not really that established, I was really impressed by this fig. And so I made a lot of people aware of it. I tried to really spread the word. And um, so that's what we did. And then unfortunately, I wanna say not last year, not the year before, I think it was the year before we killed our tree. Um, I had a grafted Hatib de Argentile tree. I sold the other one that was on its own roots to some lucky person and then um, ended up planting my grafted tree in the ground along with probably 10 other grafted trees that, that year. We did that in the fall and I, I lost that one and all of them actually. I lost some of my favorite varieties that year. Things like uh, Verdino del Nord, uh, we lost Rosalino, we lost um, Del Zermatons, Del San Juan Migran, we lost De La Senora Hibernenka. So many figs that I deeply, deeply respect that we talked a lot about. In fact, that year we did a top eight, my top eight figs that you could grow in a humid climate and sh a short, short season climate. And um, this was one of them. In fact, it was tied for third. I could not come to a conclusion as to <laughs> what, what I would put at third or fourth or fifth or sixth uh, because I had Rosalino right there with it. I had Smith right there with it and I had Moro de Caneva right there with it. And those four are all really special figs. Um, I just couldn't figure out though which one I liked more. And then Last year, we even did a top 20. This was obviously in the top 20. I mean, if it's in the top eight, it's going to be in the top 20. Um, but again, it was mentioned, and I think just people forgot about it because we didn't really ripen it all that much last year. Um, I did get to ripen some fruits because even though I killed my grafted tree, I took some cuttings um, in the fall and then overwintered them in my fridge in the crisper drawer with two layers of plastic. And the cuttings made it all the way throughout the winter. And then in May, I was able to take them out of the fridge and, and graft onto one of my rootstocks after realizing that I killed a number of my grafted trees that year. Luckily, I had some cuttings and regrafted it uh, along with a few other varieties. I had to buy a few varieties. You know, it was, it's, it was kind of a mess that year, but there's a tree back in here I'm gonna show you guys that was my raspberry latte rootstock or, or one of them and raspberry latte makes seriously one of the best rootstocks it's so vigorous the grafts always take it's very healthy uh, it is a seedling by the way um, i really love using it as a rootstock and so it was a, a tree we we then grafted onto that and three of the grafts actually took onto that rootstock and then from those three grafts the tree just really Took, took off from that point. Um, I even was able to put an air layer on it. And so we even had an air layer that we removed. And then back over here where the new fig bed that we created by the apple trees is, um, and that fall garden that we have, or the cool oven garden that we have, we planted um, 
uh, Haiti, the Argentile on the ground over there, still getting itself established. But, you know, it's, it's amazing how quickly it grew from that graft. And then this season, we had it in the greenhouse, the head start, and it just took off again. I know it got actually hit back. It did take a little bit of damage from the uh, fiasco we had in there this year with the heater. So it did actually take some cold damage, believe it or not. But it, it's been in, so impressive in terms of its growth, um, in terms of how quickly and easily it sets the fruits, um, how many fruits there are this year. The tree is just really taking off and it probably put out about close to 75 fruits, if I had to guess. By the way, look, here's my uh, Campanaria that also took damage in the greenhouse that night from the cold because of the heater. And look, look at all those fruits. Uh, and there's another branch over there that's insanely productive. But here is the, uh, the Hative tree. And a lot of the fruits I've already harvested, probably harvested close to 30 fruits. But it's extremely healthy very vigorous on this rootstock, just in general very healthy, and it just continued to grow and continued to set fruits. All that is really good fruit set over there, and uh, it's really picturesque in terms of the production. Um, so it does set very easily. The figs ripen about mid-season. Um, the skin on the fig is also rather good, uh, and so I've been comparing it this year to a number of figs with a really good skin to them. That's probably its best quality is its skin. Uh, so very similar to Smith, very similar to uh, Celeste, maybe not exactly on that level, but has that good skin that allows it to shed the water and not absorb the water. So it, it rarely cracks, it rarely splits, it hangs well, the shape is really good. Uh, the shape actually can be anywhere from pyroform and even to kind of almost like a cucurbiform or a uh, Urciolato shape, which those are not really the ideal shape, but just like Smith, it doesn't matter because the skin's really good. And so that skin prevents that water absorption. It's prob it really is its best quality. Now, I really have been trying to compare it to Smith because as I said, in the top eight figs that we had, we ranked them on, on a video that we did and also on the blog, figboss.com. You guys can go back and read that if you're interested. We I wanted to compare it to Smith because it was tied at the time two years ago with Smith and I wasn't sure which one to put higher but I do think Smith is a notch just a very small amount higher than this fig here in terms of its overall performance and flavor and I'll tell you the big differences are one I enjoy the eating experience slightly more on Smith and also Hatib the Argentile has a slightly longer hang time uh, I would say the hang time is about average on Hatib the Argentile, but Smith is about a four or five day hang time, whereas Hatib is about five, six, seven days, depending on the time of the year. It's probably about six or seven, which is about average here. Seven days is about average. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, the eating experience I enjoy more, but I like the flavor more of this one. Um, this has a really distinct cherry flavor and there's not many figs that have this cherry flavor to it. Uh, I have uh, in my spreadsheet the flavor profiles and one of them is that cherry category. And out of all the figs that are in that category, this is by far the best performing one. But I do really have uh, a spot in my heart for, uh, for Cavalier. So Cavalier is just like a great fig but it doesn't really perform all that well here. I actually am trialing it in the ground. We'll see how that one works out. But for this flavor profile, for the overall uh, flavor itself, I prefer more than Smith. The texture, however, I like more on Smith because the texture on Smith is a bit cakey, a bit more like a col de dame, whereas this is quite thick as well, but rather sticky, jammy, uh, a different, consistency to it and so for that reason I I just enjoy Smith overall just a slightly bit more um, but they are rather different so it's nice to have figs in this on a very similar level uh, that are you know very very good uh, again this here's the pulp we'll show you guys before we taste it it is a it is a beaut it's 
definitely a redder color, but it's kind of is like there's mixed in somewhere in here, some pink. It's like if you mixed uh, pink and, and dark red on a, on a palette and you kind of get this color here. Um, it's a weird colored red and it almost looks, this reddish color almost looks like you would have kind of like a cherry flavor. Um, some of the other cherry flavored figs kind of have a similar color uh, pulp to them, which is a bit strange. Uh, lots of honey in here, so it's, it can be rather juicy, but often it's, it's quite thick. And then the outside, I just want to show you guys, is actually a little bit blue at this point. But earlier in the season, they are, it's a gray fig. The later it goes, we're now um, after the Staten Island Fig Festival at this point, I think it's the uh, 20th of September. We're getting like a lot cooler. It's not the cooler weather that does the, changes the color of the skin. It's just the sunlight. Um, lower down on the canopy where the figs ripen first, they're a bit shaded and they don't get that darker color you see here. Uh, they're more of a grayer color. It's kind of like a yellow green undertone with gray overtones. It's extremely beautiful. And then as the season goes on, the sunlight is more intense on these figs. Uh, well, it's, it's not as shaded, I should say, um, on those particular figs because they're higher up on the canopy. And then of course it turns a darker color like that. Um, so it's either gray or blue, depending on how you, you look at it. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really good one. So let me try it. Really great flavor. The berry flavor is just top notch. You know, there's not many other figs like that have this level of berry flavor that you can ripen here at a high quality and consistently. You know, that one right there is right up there with the berry flavor of like, um, in my mind, like a Col de Dom, maybe even a Black Madeira. Uh, some of the others that perform well here that have that nice berry flavor is Verdino del Nord and Vertolino, Smith. So it's not really in, um, it's really in a small class of figs that also taste really, really good, uh, but also perform among the best. And so for me, that's, you know, you can't ask for more. It's like, um, you know, it has, a, it has everything going for it. So that's the video here, guys. That is the review. I know it's been a long time coming, I guess, to talk more about this, this fig again. I, we may have touched on it last year, but there needs to be more attention on this, this variety. And it, um, you know, it's not really even found in Europe. Uh, the history of it, I'll just mention really quickly, is that it's supposed to be a French fig that the USDA imported, but who knows where exactly that comes from. If you look at these different French varieties and you look at these different, well, uh, you know, good documentation on these different varieties, you'll never find it. I don't know a single French grower that does know it. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a weird little thing here that even though it is probably from France, um, we should, in fact, uh, it should be on that list of figs that we have to kind of give over back to Europe. So things like Black Celeste and Smith and Hattie the Argentile, they're not actually found really commonly at all in, um, in Europe. And for that reason, um, those are just three of the really nice figs that America kind of has to offer for people like myself. So we will see you guys soon, okay? Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll catch you guys for the next one. Take care.